Once we get our minds around certain data types in a language, then we typically go to looking at the operators in a language. And, you know, I like using W3Schools because they organize the operators for Python in the exact same way that they organize them for JavaScript. So it's a, it's a familiar interface to us, right? So when we think about operators, we have the standard arithmetic ones where we can do math operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide, modulus. Then we've got our assignment statements, right, where we can do uh, logic with plus equals, plus plus, that type of thing. And then we have comparison and logical operators where we use these for decisions, right? If, else, if, else, if, these types of things. And then we can use our and and or our logic. And we'll re use some of these other operators as we go. But I thought in today's little short demonstration here, we would look at using uh, um, an arithmetic operator, modulus, and we'd also look at comparisons to do a simple decision. And we'll stick with randomization as our example so that we've got something from a previous video. Okay, so I've done my randomization. You want to pause the video just to refresh your memory here. I've got a random number ending up being three. Okay, so we could do this familiar type of question that we did in JavaScript is, is the number odd or even? And there's our modulus. And uh, when we ask that question, is it odd or even? We have a either or, right? If, else, decision to be made here. So let's take a look at what that might look like in JavaScript or sorry in Python here. So I could do a decision like this and say if rand no modulus 2 equals 0. Okay that is asking is it even right boom colon. Okay, now what have we just done here? This is what a decision looks like in Python. See, the beautiful thing about Python is it's removed a lot of the syntactic noise that other languages have around the curly brackets. So Python does not denote blocks through curly brackets. Rather, it uses two things. The semicolon, in this case, to say here's my opening conditional statement. When I put the colon out, it's saying what's following it is a block, right? So watch, when I hit my enter key, look how um, the console naturally tabs in for me. Tabbing is the way that we denote a code block. So by tabbing in one level, we now say that this block belongs to the true condition. You know, I have even. So I'm gonna say uh, message equals quotes with a string even number. All right. And then I'm going to uh, move it back. So I just hit my enter key and moved it back. Else colon, another block, message equals odd number. Okay. So you're, you're seeing a bunch of things here is how do I do an if else statement? Well, you're seeing it now. We still have a conditional statement. We still use our comparison operators. Um, so here's our equals equals for evaluating for equality. And here's our math operator modulus for generating that uh, odd versus even state. And then we see that we use tabs for block in combination with these colons, semicolons or sorry, colons. All right, now I'm just going to hit my enter key and back up. Okay, and now let's look at message. All right, and of course it should be an odd number because we generated the random number three. One of the last things I'd like to comment on here when we're talking about blocks, which in Python they call them suites, right? But these code blocks here denoted through the tabbing in, uh, there is no block scope when it comes to decision structures. In JavaScript, you know, this message variable would only be accessible within the block, right, in the, the newer versions of JavaScript. Here we see that the message variable is accessible within the block and also outside of the block. Okay, so just a little subtle difference between Python and uh, ECMAScript or our new version of JavaScript. Great, okay, so you've learned a lot in this short little video and onward to learning more new little tidbits.